suggestion I've got for you guys, stitching is on the outside. I use that as the leading edge of the net when I'm catching bristlenose catfish. They're up against the glass, they hit this stitching. When they hit that stitching, they then go into the middle of the net. So just like that. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be moving some fish around in the fish room to make way for some brand new fry that are coming through. So let's get straight into the video. So the first fish getting moved around in the fish room today uh, the fish that are in this tank here, and they have my albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety, are in here. However, next to them are some Neolamprologus similis, shell dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. Because they're in that tank, I've decided to make this tank another shell dwelling cichlid tank, and I'll be putting in my trio, my breeding trio of Neolamprologus brevis sunspot in here. That way, I've got the shell dwellers right next to each other, and uh, there's a little bit of uh, nicely organized in the fish room, kind of uh, in my mind anyway, it'll be a little bit neater because the shell dollars are near each other. First thing I'm gonna do is move the catfish out of this aquarium. I'm gonna be moving him into a tank on the bottom row. The bottom row of tanks on this rack are the uh, lowest temperature in the whole fish room. And bristlenose catfish don't require um, very warm water. Uh, they don't like co freezing cold water, obviously. So I'm gonna be popping them on the bottom row. Uh, with the other bristlenose catfish that I have on the bottom row and then that will make way for my Neolamprologus brevis sunspot which will go into this aquarium out of the top rack in the rack behind me. That will then make room for some Lamprologus ocellatus gold uh, fry to go into that uh, aquarium that the brevis sunspot are currently in and in turn I'll be able to move my Neolamprologus leilupi into the aquarium that the Lamprologus ocellatus gold are currently in. So it's a big shift uh, but I need to start at the first tank to do that. Um, so I don't have to be putting fish into holding containers for uh, a period of time while I'm moving fish around. So to avoid putting fish into buckets and all that kind of stuff, I just wanna get put them straight into the aquarium that they're gonna be sitting in. So guys, as you can see, I'm doing a water change on my guppy tanks right now. You can see the volume of water I've taken out. And the reason why I'm doing a water change on the guppy tanks is because I'm going to be using water from tanks that don't have any fish in them to fill the guppy tanks back up. Basically, there are aquariums on this rack that just have water in them, and I've been using them as my water change reservoir system. So they've just been holding water, aging that water in those aquariums, they've got no fish in them, and then I fill the other tanks back up with that water. Now, the reason why I'm doing this first before I move the bristlenose catfish is the bristlenose catfish are going to be going into one of these water change reservoir tanks. And I don't really want to shock them. I want to give them some water from their actual aquarium in uh, their brand new tank. Uh, and to make way for that water volume, I am going to be filling up these guppy tanks with the water out of those water change reservoirs, those water changed aquariums. So uh, the bristlenose catfish won't get shocked too much when they go into their brand new aquarium. Obviously I can put them straight back, straight into a water change reservoir aquarium, that's fine but I just don't want to shock them too much. I want them to have kind of the same water parameters that they're currently in right now. So I'll be draining water from that tank there down into a water reservoir tank uh, after I've filled up the guppy tank that you see here with the water change water out of that aquarium that was holding that water that the bristlenose catfish will be going into. Hopefully that, that makes sense and it doesn't confuse you too much, but I'm just trying to move water around without wasting it. So that is why I'm draining the guppy tanks first Anyway, I'm going to stop this water change now. It's gone down uh, enough, and I'm going to put it on the other guppy tank that's at the end of the stand here and start draining water out of that tank. So this tank here and this tank here do not have fish in them. I've simply used them again as water reservoirs for my water changes. So they just simply hold water. So I've got some aged water with the chlorinator in it for my water changes. There's no fish in them. Uh, but this is where the bristlenose catfish are going to be going into. Actually, so what's gonna be happening is, I'm gonna drain water out of both these tanks, put the water in the guppy aquariums you just saw me draining out of. So the water from here will go to the guppy tanks. Then I'll get some water from the bristlenose catfish tank and the peppermint bristlenose tank, put it in these aquariums, and then put some more water change water in there. And that will be it for the changes of water, for the water parameters, uh, for the fish that will be moving in these two bottom tanks. So. The albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety, will be going into this tank here. And my peppermint bristlenose will be going into this tank here. Now you can see there's some driftwood in this tank. Uh, I've been getting rid of the tannins uh, by keeping it in here. I'm going to have the tanks bare bottom. Uh, I like to keep bristlenose catfish tanks bare bottom because they're so much easier to clean than having to gravel vac 
in amongst fry uh, and all the their feces going into the into the gravel just a nightmare to clean having a bare bottom tank makes that a whole lot easier having a little internal power filter in their aquarium makes that even easier when you're doing water changes you basically don't have to vacuum it up all you have to do is siphon water out of the tank uh, to whatever level you want clean the filter the, the power filter and then fill the tank back up and your water changes that are done I really recommend you do that a whole lot easier than trying to siphon out water and feces in amongst bristlenose catfish fry because it is inevitable you will suck up bristlenose catfish so um, bare bottom tanks little internal power filter and uh, do your water changes that way a whole lot easier anyway what i'm going to do now like i said is pump water out of these aquariums into the guppy tanks and those guppy tanks will be done for the their water changes will be done for the week and then drain water from the bristlenose catfish and the peppermint bristlenose catfish tanks into their brand new aquariums and their water changes will be done for the week as well and then move those catfish into their brand new tanks then we can start moving cichlids into these tanks anyway i better get cracking because there's a lot to do today so guys the water change pump as you can see is in this aquarium pumping water out of this holding tank up to the guppy tank up here won't take long to fill that guppy tank up then i'll move the pump from this aquarium into that tank and start filling the guppy tank up at the far end of the stand just with my water changes i'm not probably can't see it on camera i'll adjust the aperture so you can see past the brightness of the aquarium light i use a little plastic container to soften the flow uh, of the water coming into the tank that brand new water coming out of this uh, water change pump comes out very fast and could potentially kill the guppies as it comes out that fast so to avoid that i use a little fruit container with some holes in it to uh, soften that flow. Any container like that, an ice cream container even with some holes drilled in it, uh, will do, we'll do the same job as, uh, as that container. Just makes um, softening the water flow into the aquarium uh, more, more tolerable for the guppies, uh, for, your, for your delicate fish. Yeah, I use these little clamps as well to hold the hoses in place because uh, they save you having to hold the hose in place while you're doing the water change. So water change water has been taken out of these aquariums. I filled up the guppy tanks and the water that is in these two guppy tanks came from the two water change reservoir aquariums on the bottom row. Now I'm starting to fill up those two water change tanks that I was using for to house the aged water. I'm starting to fill them up with water from the aquariums that the fish are going to come out of. So this tank here is getting my albino bristlenose catfish that are in this aquarium. So I'm draining about maybe uh, 10 centimeters worth out of this tank into this water change uh, reservoir aquarium which will be their brand new home that will help them not be as shocked uh, when they get moved to their brand new aquarium and then the peppermint bristlenose catfish which are in this aquarium i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to drain water out of here pop it into this aquarium and then catch them out and put them into their new home what i'm going to do is move all the driftwood into the aquarium move the two sponge filters out of here set them up in the new aquarium as well as the uh, internal power filter that i run on this tank i'll clean that out then pop it in the brand new tank and then their water changes are done for the week as well catch all the fish pop them in their brand new aquarium and then i'll repeat the same thing again with the peppermint bristlenose there's only four peppermints in this tank so i'm going to stop this water change now i think that's enough of the old water the rest will be brand new water change water so now i'll do the same thing but on the peppermint bristlenose tank get your clamp clamp down the hose securely start a siphon Clamp that hose down, water's now coming out of here. I'll take approximately the same amount of water out of the peppermint bristlenose catfish tank. Turn the light on for you guys so you can see. I'll take approximately this amount of water out into their brand new aquarium, catch them out, pop them in there. All right guys, so the next thing I'm gonna be doing is catching out all the bristlenose catfish out of this aquarium and putting them into their new home. Taking all the sponge filters, all the driftwood out and should make it a lot easier to catch all the bristlenose catfish. The one thing I'll point out with catching bristlenose catfish, uh, they do get caught in the net sometimes because of their uh, spikes that come out, the odontodes that come out of the sides of their heads from underneath their gills. So there will be some getting caught in the net. But apart from that, the suggestion I've got for you guys, you, when you've got a net, there's two sides you can use. You can use the smooth edge where the stitching is on uh, the inside. You can see it's, it's a nice clean edge basically. Or this side where the stitching is on the outside. So you can see the stitching is all out on the outside. I use that as the leading edge of the net when I'm catching bristlenose catfish because when I put them, when I get them up against the glass, they're up against the glass, they hit this stitching that's sticking out and when they hit that stitching, they then go into the middle of the net. 
So just like that, like just how you saw there, they've hit the stitching and they're in. If you don't have that stitching on the outside, uh, it's a lot harder to catch a bristlenose. So guys, all the albino bristlenose catfish are caught out of this aquarium. They're in their brand new home down here, getting used to the water parameters of this aquarium. Next thing I'm gonna do now is get all the driftwood out of the peppermint bristlenose catfish tank, pop them in their new aquarium, and then get the uh, internal sponge filters, get them out, pop them in the aquarium as well, and then I'll catch the peppermint bristlenose and introduce them into their new home. I thought I'd show you how big the peppermint bristlenose catfish are in this aquarium now. And yeah, they've really, they've pretty much doubled in size. And I'm um, really happy about that. So this guy is kind of panicking. There's no shelter in the aquarium anymore, uh, apart from that one sponge filter that's still in here. So I'm gonna catch these guys out and pop them in there. Brand new aquarium. Two were in the actual cave. Uh, they weren't spawning, they just went in there because I had taken out all the driftwood and uh, the rocks. So uh, they're already in there. That was very easy, obviously, to catch them. And now, I'm just gonna catch these guys, let them out, pop them in their tank, and then I'll completely take out all the gravel that's in this aquarium, uh, drain it, clean it out, and uh, be ready for the next fish that will be going in this aquarium. So guys, the peppermint catfish, they're in their brand new aquarium and the bristlenose catfish, the albino fry, they're in their brand new aquarium as well. They've got water from their original tanks in here, as well as the original sponge filters that were in their aquariums. That's why I'm able to do this very quickly without having to uh, cycle the aquariums. The sponge filters that uh, were uh, filtering out those specific aquariums are in with their actual fish still, so I didn't have to cycle the aquariums or wait six weeks for the ammonia cycle to complete. That's why I'm able to do this on the same day. I just wanted to point that out to you guys. So now what I'm gonna do is top up these two aquariums with fresh water. Their water changes will be done for the week. I've moved them into their brand new homes and we're ready to go. These two tanks, zoom out. So this tank here and the one right at the end that had the baby bristlenose catfish in it there are ready to go. I'm gonna completely clean them out, take all that water out. That water will get siphoned out to the garden completely clean, uh, take the gravel out of this one, the peppermint bristlenose catfish tank, take, the, take that gravel out, I'm not gonna use it anymore. Uh, I'm gonna put full filter sand in these aquariums. Uh, that aquarium over there at the end there, like I said earlier in the video, is getting my Neolamprolagus brevis sunspot. And this aquarium here is actually getting one of the breeding pairs of Regani. They're going in here and I will put putting some pool filter sand in that tank. Again, I've got a lot to do. Um, I'm not even halfway there. Uh, it's gonna be a long day in the fish room and I just wanna get it done. So I'll get cracking with the rest of this cleanup and transfer of fish. So there you have it guys. Part one of moving the fish around in the fish room to make way for some brand new fry. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.